Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So if you're a team leader, business owner, maybe you're involved in a corporation, company, whatever, and of course you do presentations from time to time with your staff, your team, could be on a Zoom video, and there's so much detailed information going by, you wonder, is everybody picking up on that? Was it confusing? Was it clear? Got a solution, a really, really cool one for that. Graphic illustrations in real time. And I had no idea this existed until we got together about a week ago. And she's back to even show us some of the some of the samples and stuff that she does as a, re- a graphic recording artist. I can't even say it because it's so new. I'm like, <laughs> new to me anyway. Ashton Rodenheiser yeah. is with us. Hey, Ashton, how you doing? Good, good. It's so great to to be back with you, Steve. Such a joy. For sure. And I'm a, a graphic guy from way back. I appreciate all of this. And I didn't even know this existed, but mm-hmm. you've been doing this for a long time. Yes. How many of these have you done so far? About? I haven't calculated for a few months, but the last I had checked, I had just surpassed the 2,500 mark. A, a crazy number. And that is yeah. you <laughs> listening being part of an event, whatever it might be, a seminar, Mm -hmm. a conference, Mm -hmm. whatever. And then you take the information, encapsulate it in graphics, and then provide it up on screens. And then, of course, it's available if anybody wants to refer back after the the presentation, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I love you're like an advocate already for it. It's awesome. (laughs) Makes sense, though. And, you know, looking at your work, I see it. Like how many times I've been at a presentation and let's be honest, unless it's a very compelling, motivating event, eh, halfway through, a lot of us are like, okay, on our phone. like Yeah. We might miss some of that. Or maybe a coworker, colleague turns to you and says something, and then you're you're focused away. But Mm -hmm. you're listening as just a regular person. So now everything is fresh. You don't necessarily know what the products are, what the concepts are. So you've got a fresh set of eyes on it. But I think that's fantastic because you break it down to the basics and make it all easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh, I, I always get a really lot of positive feedback when I'm working with people. And I would say the number one thing that people say to me is I'm a visual learner this resonates with me. So that's really beneficial. And exactly like you said, we can't, we can't assume that everybody can pay attention. Like our mind wanders, right? It just does. We can't, we can't help it. Even if the speaker is captivating. Um, Side note, I do feel like I could probably start a whole other business on how to, how to teach speakers, how to be better speakers at this point. You know, you've got something there. Uh, After (laughs) <laughs> watching 2,500 plus presentations for sure. You know mm-hmm. what, and I'm sure you can, you know, turn around, look at the audience and yeah, that this is, it's not going that well. <laughs> yeah. I can usually, usually tell within the first five minutes, if it's going to be hard or more easy to capture for sure. Just how they, their presence, how they set it up. You know, um, I'm always surprised that people don't tell stories. Like tell stories, people. I can't, uh, I can't believe the number of presentations. It's just a whole bunch of information and there's no stories in there and people relate to stories. So there is a tip for you. If you're a speaker, just put in a story, put in a, especially a personal one is even better. You Um, completely hold it there. You really have. And and I'll, I'm going to echo that as well. Being in broadcast literally since I was 17, if you're going to speak to people, on a fairly regular basis, one of the best things you can ever do is become an efficient storyteller. Yes. Get to the point, make it compelling, interesting, pick out things the, that are relatable, but you start that side business right now. Get going. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have lots of listening tips for people too, but um, yeah, it's been a really amazing journey and I do feel very blessed to be at this point where I feel, you know, very grounded in what I'm doing and that I have really amazing clients. I do feel like I can be a bit picky and choosy now that if I get any red flags for people, then I'm like, mm, maybe now we're not the best fit to work together, but, um, it's been, it's been such a joy and I'm really glad that I persevered for the first 
through those first few years, because they were from an entrepreneurial journey perspective, it was rough, right? A lot of rejection, a lot. I, I do feel like I'm a bit rejection proof at this point, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause you have to get to a point where you believe in your work so much that it is like, just too bad if someone decides not to work with you because you know, their audience would really benefit from it. Uh, totally. Uh, it's almost like my analogy here and I love analogies like online dating where let's say you recently become single, then you start talking to or meeting people. And there is definitely some rejection there in the beginning, but yeah. after you go through the process and you meet a few people and there's some rejection, both ends, whatever, then it's like what you just said, you have confidence in yourself. Same kind of thing. You just feel like I'm, I'm good. I got something here. Yeah. Uh, and, and you bring it on. And the other part of it is Ashton in this regard, you blaze some trails. This is new territory. So expectable that you're going to get some rejection because people don't really quite get it uh, until they get it. Yeah. You really have to, unfortunately, sometimes experience it. So I had a facilitator one time at a conference. I hunted him down after he spoke and I was like, how do we like get people to understand like the value of this? And he said, what, what we do as graphic recorders, sketch noters, live illustrators, um, it's an experienced good. You don't truly understand the value of it until you experience it for yourself. Either I'm in the room with you capturing on paper or doing it digitally through a Zoom call. You do have to experience it, I find, sometimes to understand the value mm-hmm. because it's a lot easier when I get on a call with someone and they're like, oh, I've seen that before and it was so great and I loved it. This, you know, this is why I loved it and la, la, la. Like it's memorable. People, you know, engage with it in in the moment and you know, it's a lot more difficult in a sales process if people haven't experienced it before, because it almost sells itself once you experience the the value for yourself, for sure. I feel that when you see it, you see the value right away because you see what it looks like. And then you translate it to, let's say, a presentation that you're going to do or you have done. And then you realize, whoa, that could have made it so much better. People would have remembered stuff. Uh, yeah. Why don't we, you want to show an example? Yeah, I'll show one of one. I'm a, I'm a Bern, if Brene Brown is out there, I'm a huge fan, of course, who isn't a huge fan of Brene Brown. And I did a little book summary of her braving the wilderness book. So this is a high level sort of view of some of the key takeaways from, from that book. So, uh, to be clear, this and correct me if I'm wrong, this wasn't an event, but this you... was not an event. This was a book, actually, her book. Yeah. Okay. Um, got, same kind of thing because the book has information in it and so does an event. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. So you read the book. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing as if you were listening to an event or, you know, a, a conference or something, seminar, and then created the the graphics to go along with it. Absolutely. I'll pull up some uh, more examples. You do a lot in cybersecurity. Let me see if I can pick it out a good one that might be. Who knows if this is a good one or not, but this is the first one on my list here. Sure. Deconstructing the analyst mindset. So all about being a cybersecurity analyst. So the speaker here. Hey, leave that up there because I'm I'm looking at it and I'm I'm looking at it with fresh eyes. Right. right? Yeah. And and you have to keep in mind when somebody is looking at these, they typically are part of the events. Right. So they're already ramped up. This is just reinforcing what the points were. Absolutely. Yeah. My my thought is sometimes if I know a lot of people who are gonna look at them later who weren't at the event, I do try to keep that in mind. I might add a little extra detail here and there or add some extra filler words to try to help bring it together a little bit more. But the idea is like, you know, if you sat in on this presentation and you're looking at it, of course, being live drawn potentially, and and then looking at it after. You know, within 20 seconds or even less, maybe you can go, okay, I remember when he said that. Oh, right. Bridge the gap. Oh, yeah. That model, the forecast, like you can go right, right, right. Like you're just like checking it off in your mind. 
of like, oh, right. I remember when he said that. Oh yeah. So, and especially when you think about taking what, like, what are you going to do with this information now? Right. The speaker has all this amazing wisdom. It's now out in the world. Now it's in a graphic, you know, I see the graphic as like a conduit between listening and doing right. Listening and, and being in that room or virtually or otherwise, and the action of that information, because as a speaker, I would like to think that you care about your message and you hope that it changes someone's belief or the way and it can help them make their job easier. So but if you can't remember what was said, how can you go and implement that information, right? So there's a more likelihood uh, that you'll take that information and do something with it, implement it into your workplace or your life after an event. So this event... Do you recall if this was the only graphic or there were a few other ones? And do you this, typically do others? Yeah. So this one was a series of, it was a two day event and I did 16 graphics. How many? Like 16. Wow. At wow. Over two days. I'll pull up another one from that. Oh yeah. This one was fun because he had like little Lego analogies and stuff. So I put like a little Lego man in it, <laughs> which was fun and little Lego shapes. Yeah. So I try to like take, you know, vi visual imagery of people have it threaded throughout, um, you know, into the graphic itself. And if I know that the clients like embraces, you know, humor and fun, then I, I like to add in a lot of, I, I like to add a lot of humor and fun into my work too. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. And you know, what's interesting. Some of this stuff relates to everything. Like the last graphic, you had uh, sort of a bridge and it was bridging the gap between uh, yeah. perception and reality. And that's, that's kind of standard that you know, they're talking about that. I, I could take that and put that on many graphics because it's so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's it, like, I think I had said on our last call, like a lot of the, a lot of the themes are similar across all the industries I work in, a lot of it is like, how do we work together? How do we play the nice in the sandbox? <laughs> you right. know, how can we collaborate more? All a lot of those things. Like they're, you know, even though I've worked in all these different industries, a lot of the same things come up over and over and over again. And they're around that. How do we work together? How do we collaborate? How do we communicate more effectively? All that stuff. Yeah. Is is this uh yeah. freehand everything you're doing here? Everything is freehand. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. In the moment. Wow. Yeah. You know, so sometimes if there's a lot of content and it's only like 20 minutes, my writing might be a little bit more messy than other ones, but you know, it is what it is. How do you know how much time to take on one? Let's say it's a, let's say there's, it's a three hour event. They take a break for lunch. How do you know how many of these to do? Um, well, I just follow the, the schedule. So if, um, you know, if, if in the morning they've got four talks and each is a half an hour, boom, boom, boom. I, I do them most of the time in real time. Right. And that's why I created like 16 over two days, for example. Right. Cause I'm just, I'm there sitting, following along. Do you, do you, well, do you make the determination, yeah. Ashton, let's say you're, you're listening and it's like, wow, there's a lot of information here. I'm, I'm going to need to do too. Do you mm -hmm. decide that? Uh, or is it pre-negotiated when you set up, you know, what you're going to be doing for them? Right. Yeah. Usually, usually I'll have a, we'll look at the agenda together. If it's a little bit like, if it's pretty, I was call like pretty standard event. Like a lot, most events are pretty standard. It's like, talk, talk, break, talk, talk, lunch, talk, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, each one is a half an hour and the keynote's an hour and there's a panel in there for an hour or something like that um, is like really common. But if it's a bit odd, if, if the schedule is really different, if they have a whole bunch of like little tiny talks, like 15 minute talks, and I'll be like, okay, I can do this or I can do that. So, you know, it's usually just a short conversation about the agenda for me to go, okay, this is what I can provide. This is how many I can do. This is what it's going to look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. And it's super cool. Like I, I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to dissect, you know, ransomware so important. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm trying to interpret what went on, but the point is you would know what went on 
because this is for people that were at the event and to yes. refer back to. I just want to make that clear. This is not you just creating these type of graphics just to educate everybody because that's not that, that's not possible. There was a lot going on during the event. This is um, just kind of the crib notes, sort of. Yeah, these are like the individual speakers, right? So this one here is, you know, 30 minutes or so, and this is what they had to say. And when I was saying earlier about, you know, I usually know within five minutes or so how it's going to go is because how they set it up. You know, what are they, they sometimes will be like, okay, this is what we're going to talk about for the next half an hour. And some of the most, the smartest people in the room that, you know, when I was in person so much and everyone would like, you know, oodling, I don't know these people, they're famous in that industry, but I don't know who they are. <laughs> and they're freaking out and all of this stuff. And I'm like, oh. And um, they get up to speak. And more times often than not, unfortunately, those smartest people in the room are actually the most difficult to draw because they have so much wisdom. And I just wish they would just pick that one thing that maybe they're known for and just do that one topic justice or pick out like one key message or no yeah. more than three key messages. Because I feel like some of those speakers that, you know, they're the ones that have written 10 books and all of this stuff, they have so much. And I find oftentimes they just go in with like maybe I don't want to say too much confidence because they're like, I know, I know I'm doing, but they don't have a clear message, right? What is it that you want your audience who who's in who's in the room, what it is that you want them to take away, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're sometimes not um the best at speaking. I mean, I've done it a ton of times before. Yeah. In in the marketing world, which I do, and you put a microphone in front of a high profile surgeon. Oh my gosh. Yes. He's like in, incredible. Yeah. Then it all falls apart. <laughs> I know. And they're brilliant. That's the problem. They're right. so right. smart. They're so smart and they are so good at what they do. It doesn't mean that they have, have done the work to be also a good speaker because it is a lot of work to be a good speaker, right? Of course. Yeah, it's a lot of practice, you know, go to Toastmasters, do all the stuff to be a good speaker. It's It can be quite challenging, but I would say that, like the most famous person, and he was great. I'm not, you know, poo-pooing him. The most famous person I probably captured, well, two of them, was Steve Wozniak. I was on a on a Q&A with him in front of like 2,000 people. It was like him and the person asking him the questions and me and 2,000 people, and then probably Sir Tim Berners-Lee the inventor of the World Wide Web. I was on a stage with him. I have a picture of him and me, like him talking to me while I'm on the stage. It's pretty cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Even just looking at these, it just breaks it down to the basics, which we want as a takeaway. Exactly. Um, and and when an event is done, these are, of course, these are up on the screen in real time, but are these often available after the event? Do the facilitators make them available? Yeah, absolutely. And I found a few years ago that I felt like people weren't utilizing them as much as they possibly could. So I actually created a PDF document that I, you know, update once or twice a year with just think ways that people have told me that they've used them. So like, oh, you know, social media, of course, is like a no brainer, but I have people who, um, you know, they upload the the videos after an event on YouTube. So they use the graphic as the thumbnail, you know, they give it to speakers and sometimes they'll use it as, as like their LinkedIn banner. Um, you know, they can put it in some reports. There's lots of different use cases that you can use for them. And sometimes I'll even get like involved with their marketing department as well to be like, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to give you. These are like the, you know, the file formats and all of that good stuff. And then Sometimes they'll say, oh, you know, could you just like chunk out this part and add a little thing or whatever? So like there's so many just not just, of course, like them sending them out to the attendees after is like, you know, step one. But there's so many different ways that you could use them after an event to help yeah. elevate the messages going on until next year, you know, like promoting the next year event. Like I specifically had an attendee at an event tell me. I saw all the graphics happening online and I had like FOMO, like fear of missing out, like they were missed out. So they were like, I knew I had to come to the next year event because of all the amazing stuff that you had done. And I know I'd missed, like, I missed it. I missed it. It was so cool. And I missed it. Wow. 
right? So like you could even use it as like a way to market your next event. Be like, look what you missed it. Like, look at all the fun stuff that we talked about that you missed out on. So make sure you come next time, right? There's, yeah, that's just scratching the surface for sure. It's because it's so clean, <laughs> you know, it's so clear. Um, how about one more? Let's take an, an, another one, maybe out of the, uh, let's say the tech end. Is there any you know thing we can look at that's not so technical? Well, you know what I'll show you, which is kind of interesting. Let me pull up one that I did. So when I do it in person, I photograph them and clean them up. The graphic looks a little different because it's a photograph. Um, so I'll share with you one of those because they're kind of interesting. Hmm. It just has a bit of a different vibe to it. It's, it's wider for first off, usually. Um, because... so explain that again. This is the, <laughs> the raw so, what? So this one was drawn on an eight foot long piece of paper four feet wide or three, I guess three and a half feet wide, eight feet long and done like in person in real time with me at the board capturing with like my fancy markers in my hand. So, and then this was a photograph. And then I cleaned it up a little bit in Photoshop just to kind of take out any shadows and stuff. So then this is the output that I provide to clients when I'm doing it in person. So it doesn't have like, you know, the super clean lines and all of that that you get from a digital version. Um, I could, if if they wanted, I guess I could convert it and redraw the whole thing digitally. But, you know, you can see the color lines. You can, you know what I mean? Like there's just a little bit more texture to it when um, I provide a photograph of it after an event. Well, okay. So there's, there's two things here. If you were live in person, Let's pull up another one from that event. Yeah, you, you can do it on an eight foot board like that. Um, yeah. But do you when you're when you're in person at an event? I'm sure. And tell me if you've done this or not. You mm -hmm. you still do it on your digital tablet, and they just display it. Just a different way of doing it. Uh, I have a couple of times, not very often, because usually when they want me in person, more oftentimes than not, they want the 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 analog physical nature of it because it is because it's so large it's ca it's so captivating right there's pros and cons to both like the digital you get the graphic right like immediate because i can export it and send it um but there's something about the tangibility of it being in the room it, it's hard to actually i'll show you this picture this I, is I totally got it picture. and it's almost as if let's say you're a singer and there's an event and Ashton Rodenheiser is going to be performing live at the event. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be wild. She's insane. She's everybody loves her. And then you sing on a zoom. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, there's yeah. no stage presence is nothing because you're not there. So yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. This is now we get a better idea. Okay. Yeah. You can kind of get, this was one that I did back in April. So you can got to get a sense of the size. So this was captured over an hour. This was an hour presentation. Um, I like a lot of color. So sometimes I, I, I just spend a lot of time trying to color things in and I, I love a lot of color. Um, but yeah, this was, this was fast and furious. This was a lot to do in an hour. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how you did that in an hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it's not just the things that you look, there's like the shadow and then there's a shadow on top of a shadow. And like, there's just like all these like little nuance and like little lines and little dots and little things that kind of help like bring it together and, and. But it's not just the graphics. You are listening to the content and then yeah. have to translate that yeah. in real time and move it along. I seriously don't know how <laughs> that in an hour, even just hold yeah. tight, hold tight, even just to draw it in yeah. an hour would be whoa, uh, amazing. If you already had all the stuff, all the content ready to go. All right, I'm going to put this here, put that there. I've already thought it out. Now I'm going to execute it in an hour. You're listening and and drawing in real time. That's crazy. And thanks for showing that because now I have a better feel. All of us can see that. And like with that that um, picture too, the mm -hmm. feel for it, it is striking when it's it's big on a board like that. I'll show you this one too because this is one like 
for my cybersecurity folks, they like when they went back, started going back in person and I say remote, they have a screen usually depending the size of the changes depending on their venues because they're all over the US. But um, you can see this was the speaker standing beside the screen as I'm projecting like I'm projecting here now, right? Yeah. So on that giant screen, people would have been in the room being able to see it unfold. And then we've got the the oh. final there. Yeah. We're uh, we're out of time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it went by so fast. That's the way it did. And as I'm, <laughs> as we're talking, I'm thinking of so many colleagues I have that are responsible for events like that. One of them is a, a leader in uh, a cable TV uh, division. So I'm going to pass the word on because she's always looking for different things. You know, sometimes it's uh, they do a presentation in another in the Caribbean or wherever. Um, but just this just adds so much to it and. Not only does it add to it, it's fun. They yeah. could, at the end of an event, hand out PDFs or pamphlets or brochures. Yeah, this is what we talked about. Blah blah blah. <laughs> this yeah. is this is you get it. You get it quick. We all want information quick, and there it is. Right. Wow. Um, all right. Maybe next week. Next week, maybe I'll talk about a book that I'm just publishing now, teaching people how to do this for their own notes. So a little hook there for you. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe I could talk about a topic and you draw as if I'm presenting something. I'll just pick up, I'll, I'll pick anything that I can provide info on out of my head and let's see how it would translate. That'd be fun. And it would only be, you will know, just say, you know, two minutes. Yeah. Quick of how that turned into that. Which I love is, it. Ashton, how do we find you? Uh, you can go to mindseyecreative.ca and you'll find uh, exam more examples and all my good stuff on there. Yeah. yeah. And um, lots of great praise and testimonials up on the website and uh, with good reason. Thank you so much for being here. Super cool. You're welcome. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.